Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're hailing from. Welcome to another edition of GitOps Guide to the Galaxy. I'm joined by the one and only Christian Hernandez, the GitOps Guide uh, to the Gods, Captain, I guess. Captain, yeah, Captain, Captain, whatever you want to call it. I don't it. know what you would want to call it. Captain yeah. GitOps. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Admiral, <laughs> Admiral, get up. We'll go with Admiral, that. yeah, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Christian, take it away, man. Let's yeah, tell us so we're we, about today. yeah, so we've we've had uh, so much fun last time. We decided to uh, invite Cornelia and Scott again um, to talk about uh, to kind of dig a little bit deeper about Flux and um, and how it relates to, uh, to OpenShift and kind of just um, pick apart the pieces. Um, just a quick, uh, kind of quick, a uh, funny note. I'm actually wearing um, the Cuttlefish T-shirt today. So I kind of want to say there was a um, there's a, a little you know funny story I guess I don't know just small anecdote um, about I actually um, attended one of the flux uh, webinars right like the hands on webinars and um, you know at the end you you know you're supposed to get a T-shirt right when when when, when you do the, uh, the the workshop and mm. um, but since it was virtual I forget who was running it uh, from from WeWorks but they're like oh just stop by the booth at KubeCon in Amsterdam and. Um, you know, pick up your shirt and then obviously COVID. <laughs> that didn't happen. So it's been like, yeah, so it's been two years, two years coming, but I finally have uh, the, the, the t-shirt. So, um, so, so it's kind of history. And also last time it was, uh, uh, it was on the way before the last episode. Right. And it got delivered. Yes. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was supposed to, so the last episode I was supposed to wear it. Um, and, but it didn't come in time. And then I checked the mail that, that day after we finished streaming and it was there yeah of, of course. course it was there of course it was so um so yeah so i'm i'm i'm, I'm ready for for today i got my t-shirt on and um and yeah so um uh, i guess I'll, I'll hand it over to uh to scott and cornelia i guess scott's gonna be driving today talking uh, about yeah. getting getting deeper is, into uh into flux but if, if you don't say, mind i'll yeah. i'll uh I'll, I'll chime in really quickly um oh, just sure, to set yeah. some context um for those of you uh who don't know us who didn't come last week um i'm cornelia davis uh cto at weaverks scott will introduce himself as well um but uh for those of you who didn't make it last week um i'll uh, and even those who did two weeks ago, I should say, is that two weeks ago, um, I did some demos. I showed you, for example, the um, operator uh, for Flux. So mm -hmm. showed you how you can go to the operator hub and you can download and you can install Flux. But I really focused on once Flux is in there, let me show you what you can do with it. Let me show you these different GitOps flows that you can build, whether you are doing it in production or you're doing it in development, you might want different flows. And I showed you a little bit of observability on that. So it was more from the, the, the perspective of what you can do with it. What Scott's gonna do today is he's gonna back up a step and say, how does this all work? So I didn't show you kind of the innards of Flux all that much. He's gonna show you a lot more of the innards of Flux and of course, He'll tell you in a moment that he is a Helm expert. And yeah. so he's going to sprinkle a bit more Helm in than I did. Well, I did none. So oh, <laughs> actually, wait. Scott, will do that. Scott, weren't right, you yeah. recently awarded something from the Helm team? That's right. We should, we should, you were. No. You, okay, okay, that so wasn't you. you. No. Nope. Okay, no, no. never mind. Nope. No, no, nope. he's, he's, be, he's being modest, right? So no, he, no, no, seriously, he, I was, I didn't have any kind of award or anything. I'm just, yeah. you know. He's, uh, he got the, uh, one of the top contributors, right? Um, no. Uh, I don't think so. The, I think you uh, might be uh, thinking of some. Hell, yeah, the, the, the award winners, right? Helm Contributor Award winners of 2021. Um, Is his name on the list? I forget. I honestly don't think that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Is there another well, looks like you. Rigby? Okay, There's well, another Scott Rigby. I, I, I completely missed the memo, and that's cool. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, um, uh, yeah, I mean, maybe if it was commits or something like that. Yeah. In the... In the, in the um, Maybe I'm, in the I'm putting I'm putting the tweet I'm putting the tweet in the chat. Okay, <laughs> okay cool. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, yeah, um, just you know, I, I'm on the Helm team. I right. So Scott Rigby, DX at, uh, developer experience at WeWorks. Um, I work with Cornelia, who leads the tech vision. Uh, you know, for for our for uh, for WeWorks. Um, I I was hired mainly to focus to focus primarily on open source. I'm super interested in open source communities um, and and different kinds of structures, including you know the rules of how we do things, governance and decision making, and um, just uh, I think it's a really interesting way to help think about 
our future as a species, you know, how we can live and work together. So I like code because it kind of like puts all that in code in some way and we get to play with that um, in ways that, that, uh, that we can kind of prove it out. So um, yeah, yeah, I'm also part of the, part of the Helm team. Um, and uh, uh, I don't know if I could call myself an expert, but I, but I, you know, I have a lot of things to, to show and, and to help with, and I'm, I'm trying to help bridge some of these communities. So especially the, the GitOps and, um, uh, and Kubernetes packaging, like the, the Helm related stuff. So. Yeah, I like using the term general enthusiast, right? Like, I don't, maybe, maybe I'm not an expert, but I'm definitely a general, definitely an enthusiast. <laughs> yeah, right. Some areas of expertise, I guess, you know, but. Yeah, I guess, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, it's really the, 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 all these, the teams that really make all of this work. So I'm super thrilled to be, to intercept these. Um, yeah, so, right. So uh, what I was just going to do was show not really so much about OpenShift. So I hope I'm not, <laughs> I'm actually going to oh, do you're totally fine. my demo on a kind cluster. So no offense to OpenShift. I just didn't really set it up. Um, but the, the main point was to, to, to show how, how you, how you can install Flux. And it really, you know, Cornelia again showed how to use the operator if you want to do that on, or for when you do that on OpenShift and you, um, and you want to get that going, but even just to, to understand how the components are, uh, get in and, um, and even just what a, what a basic setup might look like for, you know, taking something that you most, many people are probably doing now, um, uh, a get CI ops approach where you've got, you know, maybe GitHub Actions or Circle CI or whatever, Jenkins or whatever, um, making event driven uh, responses to the things that you do inside of your version control, like Cornelia said last, last time. Um, this is just, it, it's how do you migrate that to a different tool? And we're going to be focusing on Flux. Of course, there are other projects in the GitHub ecosystem, um, but we're going to be focusing on this one. So, um, sweet. Awesome. Yeah. I, I'm, by the way, a big fan of Kind. I yeah, I, like I, I use it all the time. It's it's, yeah. it's so convenient, right? To like it try to test something real quick. Kind literally just like yeah, let me get this line. operator working. So, yeah, Does it work right? Great. Yes. Okay. Ship it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah. but it is. But really, it is an important part of the whole SDLC because all of this mm -hmm. this whole GitOps thing is about the entire SDLC, and what we want to do is we want to have the same practices backed by the same tooling, regardless of where you are in the SDLC. So Absolutely. actually showing it on kind is a really great place to start because that'll be a starting point for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Definitely. That's a, that's a good point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And this is also a wonderful project in the sense that I was able to contribute to it by yelling across the room at KubeCon uh, a couple of years ago, <laughs> right before the go. contributor summit when yeah. it wasn't yeah. working yeah. on anyone's yeah, exactly. machine. <laughs> <laughs> And that's how it works. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I love it. Um, cool. Well, so should I? We didn't actually rehearse this, but I made a gist, and mm -hmm. I have some things. Let's do it. Show. Yeah, no, uh, we're, we're all do about it. doing this live. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, oh, well. <laughs> um, what I'm going to do is, sorry, first do a kind delete cluster. I actually meant to do this. First. <laughs> oh, well, you know. Let me share my screen here. Well, um, you should probably show that because so you can show how easily it is to tear down and tear and I'll up. show it. I'll show it. Okay. Well, Kubernetes clusters, like, right. get out of the hall of mirrors for a second here. And yeah, into, no worries. Uh, can you see my screen? Okay. Can you make Probably it wanna, a little bigger? Yeah. Yeah. Like the font Increased size. font size. Uh, yeah. Okay. On which one? The browser or the terminal? Both. Both. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> boom. Boom. How's that? All right. That, that one's good. Yeah. Okay. Now. Trying to make it match. How does that look for terminal? Is that, I don't want to make it too big. Does that look yeah. okay? That looks better. That's fine to me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I can blow these up like crazy if you want. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what, uh, if, if anyone, uh, okay. If anyone yeah. says anything it, in the chat. Yeah. Keep um, going. They're let's saying some emoji going. ops and you can send some glasses to us in the, in that's the right. Yeah. The, yeah. Uh, so, okay. So, someone said keep going. Yeah. As, okay, maybe right. a couple so, more. Yeah. So as as uh, as you requested, boom, kind of leave luster. I deleted it. Uh, and if anybody wants to know, it's it's the it's the uh, the Kubernetes kind sig um, is where you find it. So so yeah. So what I was thinking, uh, as this title might imply, that hey, people want to know how to do some fairly basic things, things that are that they usually have to write 
some kind of scripting around doing. Um, and I was thinking, here's a really good example. So uh, on Kubernetes, um, people want, uh, a team wants to deploy apps with ingress and they want that ingress to be a TLS. Um, and, uh, you know, so this is a fairly common setup. You've got an ingress controller, you know, whether it's like, you know, ingress nginx or traffic or whatever else. Um, and I just chose traffic for simplicity and uh, really it could be anything. I'm just showing you how really how it installs and works. I'm not going to be demoing all of these applications. Uh, and then cert manager to help you automate your, your certs. So um, this, is, this is primarily, uh, this is just a, a, very, a very common setup. And um, I, I mentioned this because I, I myself have written scripting around this and I've seen many other people do it. So, uh, so I'll show you how you can do that without this. So um, what I should have done, actually I'll do this in a sec while I describe this. It'll only, it'll take less than 30 seconds. So I'm just gonna create a little a kind cluster right now. Um, nothing, spe no special setup. Uh, you know, just make sure you've got the, you know, these probably aren't the current versions. I didn't look <laughs> in the last week or, or two. So um, anyway, just, just make sure you've got some versions that work. And um, uh, for, the, for the, the, the kind installation, I'm on a Mac, so I'm just doing a brew install. Um, but you know, use, uh, use what, what you like. And um, what, what I'm gonna do right now, just super fun is uh, I'm gonna, not show you my actual GitHub token so that you can't like, so well, hopefully the a, audience is not going to like. Yeah, be very careful here. <laughs> hopefully the audience is not going to destroy me. Well, you wouldn't be able to. Mm -hmm. So I get, so basically what, what Flux requires that the CLI is you, you, you want to set a GitHub token environment variable. And this is all in the read. This is all in the, uh, the getting started guide. So I don't need to go in, in depth here, but this is just why I'm doing this. It's so that Flux, uh, the bootstrapping, com the bootstrap command that I'm going to show you will both create a a source repository of, of different kinds. Right now, I'm going to say it's a GitHub kind, um, and I'm going to put it in my own uh, in my own personal GitHub user, and I'm going to make it private. Um, and uh, in order to do that, it needs a it needs a personal access token, and I just gave it repo scope. That's all you really have to do. You can see it in the in the guide. But um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and and silently read this, take note demo gods, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm just, uh, I made a bootstrap uh, uh, <clears throat> token. Um, I could show you all how to do that, but I don't think you really need to, to learn how to do that. And then I also need to export it because uh, I only did the read so that I could show you <laughs> without yeah. exposing without my Without showing you, yeah. <laughs> without, show you without showing you. So, okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this flux bootstrap command real quick. Um, and I just mentioned what it does. Uh, there's a lot of other things you can pass to this. Um, you can also specify specific components to add. I'm just gonna do the out of the box defaults at which, which, uh, which installs the, um, I didn't really bring a diagram with me. I could show it, but we did last week. It's essentially, it's going to install the Flux components, which is a microservice style, or let's say a multi-service style uh, tool. So it's going to install um, a customized controller, a, uh, a Flux customized controller, a Flux Helm controller, a Flux notification controller. And those are what we're really going to look at um, right now. So. And for clarity, those controllers that's the part, so Flux Bootstrap doesn't just install the controllers. Um, what you can think of Flux Bootstrap of doing is at the, at the root of GitOps for Kubernetes is that I need some automation and those controllers are the automation that we're installing on the cluster. I'm gonna do some stuff over in Git. And for those of you who um, maybe are a little bit newer to GitOps. In the beginning, I really focused on what was happening on Kubernetes. I focused on the automation. And it took me a little while to realize that a big part of what we do with GitOps is we do a whole bunch of magic on, on, on your behalf. We automate not only what's going on in the cluster, but we automate what's happening in Git. That's why you need the GitHub token. And then we establish the relationship between those two. And so 
it's really that whole bunch of things that's happening here. And so I'll let Scott continue. Those controllers are really that if you're thinking about GitOps, GitOps is about declarative configuration, version controlled with software agents that are keeping things in alignment with what your desired state is. He just talked about the controllers that ensure that are alignment. There's the other parts of GitOps as well. Thanks, Cornelia. Yeah, exactly. That. Uh, hey, uh, hey, Scott. Can you? There's been a request. Can you make the the fonts actually even more big? Uh, increase it even larger. More? Yeah, larger. Uh, yes, I can. You must have a highly high resolution screen there. Is it like a wide? Kind of, yeah, yes, you got I, like a. Yes, I do. Is that better? Which did you change? Uh, so no. <laughs> so, yeah. I changed my browser. So I have a split screen here. Um, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, up, yeah. Up browser, so the. Which is, Gonna just show the browser maybe a little bigger. Yes, the browser then, a little bigger. And there we go. Here, and I don't. The, I don't want to go the terminal. Uncrazy. Let, let's do that, and then I'll make the the. Uh, see if that helps. Okay. Yeah. Go like. Yeah, more. that's a little bit. I just wanted you to be able to see what I did, as opposed to being like three letters per uh, per line. Yeah, but, per but, line. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, they, they're, they're saying perfect. So. Oh great. Okay, cool. All right. Thanks for thanks for uh, letting me know. Um, so yeah, this is what Cornelia just with just like followed up on what I said. I just mentioned that this is just this is one of the diagrams that Stefan uh, drew at some point, and it's used in the Flux documentation. I know we showed it last week, so I won't belabor this. But essentially, uh, oops, you've got your your sources right now. Where I'm using GitHub for this demo, you've got a Flux source controller um, that's that really is watching that that source. Uh, sources can also be uh, uh, S3 compatible um, storage buckets. They can also be, you can use a Helm um, repository as a source, which I'll, which I'll, I'll be showing you in this too, and so on. Um, oh, so that's interesting. So you can actually have um, your manifests, let's say, stored in S3 in object storage and the controller will watch that. Uh, yeah, correct. And, and the reason for like, so, so one of the GitOps principles is, is for, um, I won't, I won't uh, get into the details of it right now because they're being hashed hashed out uh, file yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the GitOps working group. But, um, you know, again, not related to Flux in any way specifically, but just that that's vendor neutral across the board. But one of the, the, the principles is that you have your, your declaration of your desired state of your system or whatever part of the subsystem that you're trying to GitOps um, in uh, immutable versions, immutable version control. And so, you know, uh, Git, uh, <laughs> we should probably say this almost every time, but but GitOps is just a name that stuck. Um, it's almost who who said that? It's like a super ugly name in a way, but it's just it's just such an earworm, and it really just it really just stands in for immutable. It's, it's definitely an earworm, right? Like it, it catches yeah. your attention. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> immutably, it doesn't have yep. to be version control system. Um, it, it just has to be immutably versioned um, declarations of what you want your of what your desired state should be of your system. So, so this source controller in Flux looks at that and watches for changes, and it, it and the other controllers interact with uh, the source that it um, inspects. So that's how that's how that works. Helm controller, customized controller does. I don't want to get too deep into it at the moment, but you'll you'll notice you'll note in a moment that we use customized controller to apply plain YAML manifests for this. Just because I did this very recently with the Helm demo, I'm skipping over all of the other like cool things that you can do with customize, and I'm only focusing right now um, on uh, on on its use of applying uh, plain automatically applying plain YAML manifests um, to your cluster. Hope that helped a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. All right, so so I'm I'm back here, and uh, you know, so we just did the bootstrap. I don't know if you lost place, but but I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do GitHub repo view. Web, right? So actually, Scott, before you, will yeah. you scroll up just a hair? Sure. And so um, I just want to point out that the, the, you know, the kind of hand wavy description that I did, you'll notice if you look at all the things that Bootstrap did, it created repositories. So that was the Git part. It installed the stuff on Kubernetes and then it established connections between them. So all of that stuff is, is reported for you through the Flux Bootstrap. Now, when you do the open shift install flux, we also set up some of this stuff for you. So we're not, I don't think we're running the flux bootstrap command, but we might be, I, I don't remember Mahmood, our colleague Mahmood um, built the operator. So, but that's effectively what we're doing. So you can see kind of under the covers what's happening when you install the, the open shift operator for flux. Cool, yeah, exactly. 
Yeah, I think, and also, also it's important to point out that the the bootstrap is not only you're bootstrapping the the um, the cluster, but also your repository that you're going to be interacting with, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, you have that the the so it's like kind of like an end to end bootstrap, not not necessarily right. one or the other. Yep. Nice. Yeah, yeah, and so uh, you'll see in this in this uh, right now you've just got like a really bare bones README and you've got a file directory structure. Oops, I'm sorry, I uh, did not mean to do that. This is actually just like what I had set up before this. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, so um, it did in fact do Bootstrap, but let me get into a um, let me go somewhere where this didn't actually do anything locally yet. By the way. It only created the, the, the uh, because I told it to create GitHub, um, it only created that um, uh, in the cloud and, um, or sorry, <laughs> on the GitHub service and inside of the cluster and did the connection that Cornelia was talking about. So um, I actually um, am going to, uh, to run this again because you can, because I just re- realized that I didn't pa- pass well, you missed you miss the, the I missed the path. Gotcha. So here, here's something kind of fun. So so let's actually let's actually go to it for a second and go to code GitHub Scott Rigby and then I'll do uh, make dir. What did I say it was? GGG demo. Um, yeah, it's, it's either two Gs or three Gs. We'll see. Yeah, GitHub's guide to the galaxy. That's what I was going for. But um, ah, okay, okay gotcha. there you go. So now I'll do GitHub uh, GitHub uh, repo uh, view. Uh, Oops. Oh no, I can't do that. What am I talking about? So I need to. I need to. Uh, <laughs> I need to clone it. So let's let's clone this thing. <sighs> Sorry, folks. This well, is how we fine. know it's real. You're, you're fine. fine. Yeah. No, it's real. Yes, mm-hmm. you're fine. Yeah. I can just do. Jeez. Uh... All right. I'll do this. It's how we know it's real. That's right. That's right. All right, so now I'll go in here and now I'll do a GitHub uh, uh, repo view website browse. Okay, so the default is to put it in a, in a, in a folder called flux system and that's it. I'm gonna ch- change that for you um, for fun. I just want to show you how disposable some of this stuff is. Oh, you're gonna go into the danger zone of- uh... I'm actually gonna go into the <laughs> full on danger zone and just delete okay. the repo, recreate the thing. You don't have to do that, but this will just be the easiest to show you. Um, oh, come on. There we go. <sighs> Boom. Okay, done. All right. So now, um, or, or I could have probably done that uh, at the same time. I probably could have pushed that because you, you can actually, your repo, um, you can bootstrap an existing repo. So I could do that next. But just to keep, keep on topic here, I'm going to, I'm going to put that extra line in and um, uh, just make sure to, to specify the path. It's not going to show you too much magic here. It's really just um, uh, oh no. Am I, am I dying here? Maybe, you know what? Maybe I'm so sorry. Maybe uh, I, d- I actually don't know the easy bootstrap. Uh, <laughs> Revise. I, I would almost like just delete the kind cluster and do it again. Yeah, I was gonna say. You, I think that's it's, it's, fine. Yeah, I think you just right. the kind. This, that's what kind's for, right? And yeah, maybe. Um, away. <laughs> well, while, while we're waiting for that, there's actually a couple questions in the chat. Uh, so maybe we can address. Okay. That. So, um, with Shari, uh, actually, he's asking when is Flux two operator? When will that be GA? Um, is, yes. Is a- so I can answer that real fast. Uh, I'm gonna to go to just the Flux CD.io website, go to learn more, and then I'm gonna to go to, let's see, the roadmap is a good place to get an idea of what's happening, but we had made this link very recently to, get, to give a timetable, and I hope it helps people. Um, some people said it was very helpful, other people said it was more confusing for them, and I don't know which is right. So <laughs> let, me, let me take your temperature. Um, here's a table with dates. Some of the dates are TBD because we can't know, but it is actively being worked on, and so it's you know imminent. Um, the dates are you know what happened for each part 
of the Flux project um, on that date. So uh, October of last year, Flux went and went into maintenance mode. Um, there's some details about that. I won't like waste the rest of our demo time with that. Flux 2 CLI went into development mode. Um, we were at that point working to finish parity with Flux 1. And people were encouraged at that point to, to test Flux 2 pre-releases in non-production, which many people did. The GitOps Toolkit kit by that date was all alpha. So um, uh, this is just a, 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 a uh, this is just like a slightly more comp complicated answer because with Flux One we could it was really just um, we didn't have it separate we didn't have versioning separated because the system wasn't as multifaceted as it is now. It's now it's a multi-service architecture. So uh, the Flux the Flux Two CLI uses Semant Semver and the toolkit um, APIs follow Kubernetes API versioning pattern. And we're even a little bit more, um, you know, basically for us, when we go, when we go beta, um, it's production ready for the APIs. So, so Scott, Flux2, yes. GitOps Toolkit, can you kind of yeah. explain those two things? Yes, yes, so Flux1, so, so, so the, these, these are two columns because it just had to be that way. Flux1 is really just one column. It's easy to, it's more, it's easier to describe or at least it's it's less faceted to describe. For Flux two, we've got we've got uh, Flux two is really it really has two parts. One is the client or the CLI, and the other is um, is the GitOps toolkit, which is the um, what we I think at, at some point had called an SDK. Really, it's it's the controllers and it's the other controllers and um, uh, and packages that on which. Um, excuse me, on which, on which Flux controllers are built and on which um, other people can build controllers for Flux. So it's a, it's a toolkit oh. to, build, to, build, um, to build Flux components. Almost, so almost like a library, right? Like if I wanted to create uh, yeah. a, a plugin for Flux, I would just use the toolkit um, that's in order yeah, to, that's to exactly interface right. into Flux. Yeah, and, yeah. and it can really be improved. Um, you know, the, the ecosystem isn't gigantic out there of people building mm -hmm. controllers for Flux yet. But there is a lot of interest in it, and people are doing it. So, yep. And the so let me also add it, it, another element to that description. Go even a little bit higher level. So, what Flux One did was Flux One did several things all together. So it did things like it watched image registries, it watched Git repositories, it would do updates from the the uh, image registries out to the Git repositories. Then it would also you know, deliver over into Kubernetes. So it did all of these things. And as we as an industry became better versed at what GitOps was, we started to want to build, have a little bit more control over exactly what that GitOps flow looked like from Git over into the runtime environments and those types of things. And so Flux One had all of that kind of baked into it, had those the, the GitOps flow, and that was something that I showed two weeks ago, the GitOps flow wasn't something that you were able to really change all that much. It was all kind of baked into Flux 1. What we did in Flux 2 was we said, we actually want to be able to control these GitOps flows. So we're gonna break Flux 1 into various components. And then what the CLI does is it does, it first of all, it gives you a CLI, but then what we're also doing with the CLI is some of these commands like the flux bootstrap and so on takes those components. Cause as soon as you break things into components, it gets harder. Like yes. how do you get yes, started? Yeah. yeah. So what flux bootstrap does is it takes those components and it reassembles them for you in such a way that you don't have to take on that burden of understanding all these low level primitives just to get started. Yep. So that's why we have the two columns the flux CLI as well as the components. The components are a set of components. You can extend that set, do all sorts of cool things. And then the Flux CLI is, was part of what we have in Flux One and it allows you to kind of put those things together and leverage those components. And Scott's gonna show more of that today. Yeah, yeah the, some, the timetable links to it too. You know, so it someone commented, cool. Scott, that you could have ran Flux uninstall. Um, yeah, cluster. I hope that's someone but, from um, my team saying, oh, that it, guy should have really done Flux. It, it probably is because probably is, yeah. we, we, ye, ye buy-in, ye buy-in, um, I, I, I don't know what that, uh, but they're also talking about. Y-E-B-Y-E-N. Ah, yeah. uh, yes. Well, either way, uh, thank you very much. You're right. Yes. Uh, I appreciate <laughs> that, but hey, at least you got to see kind of how it, how it works otherwise. And, uh, um, and, and, and Hillary's, 
finish out. There is also asking if um, how you get the unicorns in your uh, in your CLI. So Ooh, was, yes, oh, yes, that was, that's uh, always a good question. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's top secret. No, I'm just kidding. It's not. Um, it's but well, real quick. Let me just answer this question first because we we gave a little bit of setup, but didn't really drive it home. So the 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 the, the next the the most recent date was um, was when Flux two reached feature parity with Flux one in February. Um, we did. And, uh, and because of that, uh, th there's a partial migration mode that had been announced in February uh, for Flux One users that people are encouraged to migrate to, uh, to, the, to the V1 beta, to the beta APIs if you only use those features. So for example, if you do Flux One read only mode and use the Helm operator, you're good to go. Um, the, the, the image automation at that date, image automation controller, the image update automation controller uh, APIs are an alpha only, and all the others had reached beta. So basically, if you're not using automated image update um, functionality from Flux One, then you should be good to go as you're of- You're ready to go, it sounds last like, yeah. month. Yeah. Um, now, the very, next, the very next date is when we're going to say that, that, um, that Flux One is, has been superseded. Um, so that, that, on that date, which is TBD, uh, we don't know exactly when it's going to be because it's, uh, you know, like Flux is having improvements, uh, really primarily being released every week, but this actually was a two week release and there were a lot of improvements. So, um, but we're still very, very careful with versioning. So uh, the Helm operator will also be archived then when, when Flux 1 is superseded, just because there is a, um, it's, it's unrealistic to, at least for, pu for public use here, to, it's unrealistic to upgrade the, the Helm controller to um, to current versions of Kubernetes, I, I really I really like the fact that you use the word superseded instead of deprecated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I mean, kudos to whoever wrote that because that's actually yeah. uh, uh, I think a better word for it than saying deprecated, right? So yeah. um, it was that it was me, yeah. but also it was a collaboration <laughs> between other members of the team. Um, okay. A lot cool. of conversations yeah. with Stefan, a lot of conversations with with uh, with with Michael and Hida and other members of the team to really make sure that we can commit to these things. Because even though we have some TBDs on dates, these alignments are, are, are commitments that we are, that we are making to uh, users. Nice. So um, really, really, so, so basically like what this really means is that, um, is that only the CLI may get breaking changes from that point forward. And the primary reason is because it will need more testing. We want, we don't want to uh, have to go to, you know, flux three just to like change some yeah. really obvious and important <laughs> CLI, CLI uh, command. So uh, the, the thing that really matters the most in the superseded um, period, which is the, the next one, is that, um, is that all the, the Flux API, APIs are, are beta. So that means they're production ready. I've got little footnotes here for people that want to understand that, okay? I, I described mm -hmm. it before, but just, uh, just, just please look at it. Um, and then the very next one will be that um, will be the public release, the GA. And I think that was the, the OP's question. Yes. Yep. So that means the CLI will commit to backwards compatibility. Um, we'll then follow a kubectl style, plus one, minus one minor version mm -hmm. um, for the Simber. And then also uh, similar for um, you know, the APIs controllers and the validation webhooks and stuff. Uh, and then there will be a period of time after that, which flux, flux one will be archived. So okay. it, it goes through sort of the normal, well, not normal, but like pretty well understood stages of, um, of that process. Now this has been documented, by the way, this isn't new. This has been documented all over the, uh, in different places and has been mentioned a number of times, but it was never really put in one spot. So that's why it's here. And again, you can get to it either from the migration um, section under migration timetable or get to it from the roadmap and it's just linked right there. Hope that helps a little bit. Cool. Yeah, no, that's great. Thank you for that uh, very thorough explanation. Thank yeah, you. Um, maybe too thorough, but in any case, uh, <laughs> I'm back here and, and as you can see, if people were paying attention, I just like just deleted the stuff. <laughs> so I didn't use Flux uninstall, which I could have, thank you. Um, but I, uh, I actually just now, now, now pass this through. So um, what I can do now though is I can kind of, I can go back to what I did before and, uh, and just do my git clone and get in there. Oops. Uh, there we go. And then, uh, and then you can see 
you know, what it really did is it, this didn't really do anything super special, but it just gave me a, a uh, you know, you, you can really set up your, your file system however you want. But the most important thing is when you do the Flux boot, um, it opens, uh, it opens, uh, sorry, let me give me one second. Oh, Flux system, it puts, you know, it, it gives a, uh, an okay, an opinionated um, structure when it starts, at least where you tell it to go. And this is just uh, represents a namespace and all of these, um, oh. all these components are, are in the namespace. So if you wanted to take a look at, there's a single customization file, which by the way, is not necessary, um, but it just kind of shows you what, what is installed that these other two resources, uh, you can not do this if you want. And then uh, the GOTK sync, the GitOps toolkit sync will show you, um, this is really the, uh, representing the source that Cornelia mentioned that it does the linking between what's in the cluster and what was just created in your source repository. This is the, the, um, the Flux source controller git uh, type source, and it shows where you're getting the information from. So that's the source. There's a customization object that the customized controller uses when looking at that source, um, it, uh, and it uses the source ref. So it uses the git repository type and Flux system, which we created. Um, and, uh, and what it does is it looks inside of the dot Flux, or sorry, Flux boot directory. So anything in there that is a, a Kubernetes style manifest will get automatically applied to your R system every 10 minutes. And you can specify that interval with the commands. You can also just modify this and edit it right here. So that just gives you a sense of how that works. And then if you wanted to see all the components that were installed, you can look inside of um, the components and it shows you all of the, uh, the cluster components. Flux. Yeah, which are the things that you saw scrolling by when you did the Flux Bootstrap. You saw all these things getting created. Those are all the things that are in that, that third YAML file. Yeah. But there's something here that I, I want to emphasize because what we've done here is we've installed Flux, but we are GitOpsing that installation. So yeah, that's this, what Bootstrap does is we're GitOpsing yeah. the GitOps agents. And so if you want to change the GitOps, if you want to upgrade the GitOps agents, you go, you know, some of the components, you go and you edit the YAML file that has the components. Do you want to edit the GitOps flow that brings things from Git over into the cluster? All you need to do is change that in Git and commit it, and we will sync that into the cluster. So what we've done is it's got the auto update stuff. So now all auto updates are just commits into the Git repository. Yeah, it's kind of, and someone says, uh, someone chatted, uh, Hillary chatted, a uh, GitOps inception almost, right? So you exactly the, the, the bootstrapping process basically just creates the manifest, applies the manifest, and then you, and then Flux uses itself essentially just to keep those in sync, right? So if you exactly. wanted to make, make changes to the, the CRDs for whatever reason, right? Uh, or like you said, upgrades, you just make a, you know, you, you, you don't have to do that outside of the, the GitOps um, framework, I guess. I'll use it for lack of a better term. You could, or paradigm, right? You, you, don't, you, you do it actually within the own paradigm itself. Yeah, exactly. Within the own paradigm. And that's super key because it mm -hmm. auto update stuff isn't that unusual. I mean, I have stuff auto updating on my Mac yeah, all the time or on my yeah, phone. Yeah, my phone's doing it right now. So yeah. Right, <laughs> right, yeah. right. But the <laughs> mechanism to do the auto update isn't the same as the application that's being auto updated. What we're doing is here is the mechanism for doing the auto update is the thing that we're auto updating. It is yeah, totally yeah. inception. Solely Super inception. Cool. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it is really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'm using this to show as well um, what mm. we just showed that flux, that source for this, excuse me, that, that custom resource for the, that's defined by the source controller. Um, you can use flux commands to get it. You, you can also just use kube, cuddle commands to, to get these. But um, the flux commands are kind of nice because it can, it can help you with discovery a bit. If you're not exactly sure what to look for in Kubernetes yet, it will tell you. So I'll tell yeah, you that's, I, that's it, always, it saves you that. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, you, you kind of have to hunt around for like, you know, you have all these manifests everywhere, you know, they have to, um, and you have to kind of piece it together in your head. 
you know, labels help a little bit, but it's, it's nice to have like a point of entry. It's like, just give me everything related to X, right? Yeah, and, and uh, it saves it saves you the trouble of doing a kubectl API resources. Oh yes. yeah, the API resource right. is this, <laughs> and now doing a kubectl get in that API resource name. Flux exactly. just says, okay, we'll we'll do we'll do that stuff for you. Yeah, exactly, and you can see that in the source, the the source uh, in Kubernetes believes that it has synced this SHA of the main branch. Oh, okay. And this is my just local. I'm not ahead in any way. I'm right there. Um, so that just gives you a sense there. Um, so what I was going to show you real quick, again, I, the, the tools themselves, like, eh, like it's not really that critical for me to show you this, but I just wanted to give people a sense of how they could do all this stuff that they normally kind of usually have scripts to wire together and have weights and checks and so on. Um, so I was just going to follow a similar uh, pattern, just put it inside the, make a namespace for this, just like flux system where all the, the flux system stuff is installed. Oops. And then I was going to use this flux create. Oops, sorry. I'm just going to echo <laughs> a, a very simple namespace object. You can also just write it out yourself, right? Um, in fact, uh, actually, I think I probably screwed that up. One second. I, I as as a as a VI fan, I'm I'm glad you're using VI. So yeah. <laughs> oh, works. I don't know why I I thought maybe I screwed up the tabbing. Uh, okay. Oh, that's good. Yeah, so, so right, so it's just like a simple namespace object, right? And, and the reason that this matters is that, um, you know, Helm does have a, uh, the Helm, uh, Helm does have a, uh, you know, Helm 3 didn't initially uh, have the, the namespace creation functionality, but then by popular demand, it was added back with a, with a command. Um, this is just using, um, this is really just a similar thing. It's just using a namespace to, in order to install your Helm chart. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to do that. Um, in this case, we're just using the, the, uh, uh, the customized controllers to do that. Because since it's in the flux boot directory, when I push this up, it's going to create the namespace. Uh, in fact, I can even show you. But I'll, why don't I do that all together, <laughs> just for fun. So I'll, I'm going to use these flux uh, create commands as well to create. I'm going to create the Helm rep repository source that I showed you. Oops, can you see this text? This better? There we go. Oh, yeah, that's better. better. Yeah. Okay. Well, you're seeing me paste it into the, the terminal anyway, and I wrote this stuff. So uh, you can see it twice now, easier. So yeah, so, so basically yeah, I'm sorry. going to create a, uh, uh, a Helm, uh, excuse me, a, a Flux um, um, Helm repository uh, type source and that for, for the source controller. And then I'm going to give that a URL and I'm going to give, I'm going to give it a namespace because I want to put it in there. Uh, I want to put it in that namespace that I'm just about to make. And I want to, for now, I'm going to export this uh, as opposed to imperatively creating this, I want to export this into a file uh, inside of that same namespace directory. So. Oh, so you can create it via the CLI? Yeah. Or, or just have it uh, exported and then you know, do it with Git. Yeah, I'll show you how to do it without the CLI too. I just wanted to show you that this like gets you up and running quickly. Um, so yeah, well, like, yeah, instead, of, instead of having to memorize YAML, I think, yeah, this is- <laughs> Exactly, and this is what, right. yeah, <laughs> what it looks like. And, and I mean, truly the components are quite, um, in, under the source controller, there's the Git repository CRD we saw, the Helm repository CRD. Uh, it's fairly clear of how, how to, I mean, not fairly, it is very clear how to do this, uh, but you don't, you don't need to. You can um, you can just use these excuse me use these commands um, to help you. But this is what it looks like. Um, I gave it a one minute inter interval. Uh, uh, I'm not really sure why I did that, but you know, uh, <laughs> for for Helm repositories, you probably want it at like a 10 minute interval or whatever. So whatever um, or less. You know, once every hour. It really just depends on what you want. Um, if your if a Helm repository updates very frequently, you might want to bump it up. Um, if you don't deploy that frequently, maybe it doesn't matter to you. So you get to change that. But luckily, you can do that GitHub style at this point and do it all within um, within these files. So then I'm also going to create a, a Helm release object in Flux 2. Um, and, and while you're cutting and pasting there, I want to clarify a little bit what's going on with that export command. So the export flag says, go ahead and stick that, you know, pipe this to a file. So he, he you know, ha had it sent to the file. If you don't have that export command, what it's going to do is it's going to take care of sending that over to Git for you. Yeah, that's a, I, I was actually, um, I, I was thinking about that, that automation, like how it gets back to us. So that's good to know that I can just create it from the CLI, but since it has the GitHub token, it can yep. take those pieces and then 
um, I guess retroactively, I don't know how, how, how what, what it would be, but it would apply, you know, what that the, the state of the cluster to uh, the Git repo. So now they match. Exactly. And yeah. So so that it's actually really important to make the point that when when we do these creates, even if you didn't have the export in there, the command isn't what's applying things to Kubernetes. The command is sending things over to Git, and then. The controllers that we already saw, the controller that's pulling things over from the boot directory is what would uh, bring things over into uh, Kubernetes. Okay. Okay. We now, never, now it's, now ever, it's ever apply to Kubernetes directly. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So now that, that makes command. sense. So yeah, yeah. So now the workflow okay. makes sense, right? So when you're doing the flux CLI, you're actually doing stuff to get and the controller's job is what's actually applying it. So gotcha. exactly. Nice. Yeah. And, and, and that's, uh, um, except of course for bootstrap, because how else do you do it? Right. <laughs> so, yeah, so, uh, um, exactly. But, but the nice thing about the bootstrap is it can be rerun. Um, uh, so for example, if you, if you already had, you already have your, your Git repository with all of your definitions in it and your cluster dies, I can show you that at the end, if you want, you just sort of spin it up again and run a fl flux bootstrap. And then you've got everything, um, uh, based, uh, should be, if everything works properly set up the way that you've declared. In your new class. So have, which is which helm. is basically what you did at the beginning of this talk. Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you had the Git repository already. Yeah, I just I just sort of started from scratch too. But uh, but yeah, so this is the Helm release. Um, you know, Helm users will notice this. If you're not a Helm user, maybe just just realize that this is metadata that relates to how that tool um, uh, uh, does package management in Kubernetes or applies um, different apps. Uh, packages of, of application manifest to Kubernetes. So I, I don't want to assume the audience here, but uh, well, okay. We, we actually have a, I have a question about Helm and the Helm controller. So okay. um, what does the interval do? Check for ch file changes or run Helm repo update every minute? Yeah, so so what, so what so it really depends on what we're talking about. So there's an in, you can have intervals for these various things. So when you're talking about the Helm, uh, excuse me, the, the, um, the source, the Helm source, mm -hmm. um, for the for a Helm repo, that for that the source controller will use that interval to check if there were any updates to that Helm repo. Uh, so it will essentially, you know, get the uh, <clears throat> excuse me, get the 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 Helm repository's index.yaml file and oh. see if there are new versions for any of the any of the metadata for the, the different charts that it, it describes. And the the um, the Helm release, the interval. This is this is actually the Helm controller now. Um, going back over here, oops, doo -doo -doo. this is now the, oh my goodness, right? One of those tabs. <laughs> almost did it, almost did it. Okay, here we go. So, so, we so, go. so on the source, that's when the source controller says, oh, let me check sources. Let me check it again. Let me check it again. Let me check it again, et cetera. Um, that's the interval for source controller, whether it's a Git um, type, whether it's a Helm repo type, whether it's a bucket type. <clears throat> the Helm controller interval says, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask source controller if there were any changes um, to my, uh, <laughs> to what I need for my Helm release. If there were any changes to the values that were sent, um, et cetera. And that, what's in the source controller is, um, give me just a second here. Uh, when I was showing you the Helm release object, um, Jeez, give me one second here. There we go. When I show you the Helm release object, it's this. You may have uh, a values section here that overrides Helm values. Mm -hmm. You may have values from for a config map, from a config map or a secret, et cetera. All of that is described in the in these. Um, uh, this is the Helm repository CRD, but uh, in the Helm release CRD definitions, there's a lot of information about that. It's kind of maybe a bit more than we can show right now if we're going to get through this stuff, but. Um, but that that's what that is what that interval represents. So you may make different changes to your chart for deploying, like people do in other in Git CI ops often, change a value, change something else, change a dependency. Um, and but rather than your push to to your version control system um, being what triggers the change, I mean we can also do that. This polls and it says it's just constantly looking and says, um, all right, you got a change. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, do my thing. I'm going to deliver that change. Um, 
I hope that helped a little bit. Okay, so so now if you, oops, now if you check it out, <laughs> um, you can see that uh, you know I've got so I've added this trap this the, this thing for traffic. Let's just like show you what GitOps looks like now. So I'm going to do a git add. Um, flux. You do get, get, wait, 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 do get status first. Just to remind everyone the files that you added. So you added that directory that you just showed. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Um, lots of demos just for, for ease. We'll say get add period, get add or get head, yep. add. Not. Yep. <laughs> I've done that before uh, in demos. I'm just going to try to not do that in demos because in the real world scenario, please don't do that. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I've actually been, people tell me things when I do demos about the, the get ad. Uh, Chris remembers that mm -hmm. episode, but um, where I actually bit me. So, um, but yeah. <laughs> and if you're doing, and if you're, and if you're adding even a path like this, please do get diff stage just to see what you've got staged. Anyway, I don't need to do a get, uh, PSA here, but um, but yeah, thanks Cornelia. Um, yeah, so so now I've got I've got this I've got local stage changes. So I'm going to do git commit uh, ingress controller. Um, all right, I got my GPG stuff going. I'm just going to do a git push. Uh, actually, let me do a git remote v just to make sure it's right. Okay, yeah, that's right. <laughs> get, do a git push. Um, and you're going to see, uh, there we go. Uh, uh, let's see. First, I want to do a flux get, well, um, get, uh, oh my gosh, sorry, <laughs> get log, uh, just to sort of get that full SHA. And then I want to do the, uh, once again, a flux uh, get source git. And it's going to show, hopefully, Oh, no, it hasn't reconciled yet. Oh, because I think I have it on every 10 minutes. So I'm actually going to do a flux reconcile command, which is pretty much just poking the bear. And it's doing the same thing that this would do and say, OK, instead of 10 minutes from now, go ahead and, oops, I'm sorry. What did I? Oh, flux reconcile source, yeah. Oh, my goodness, what is the command? Someone don't. Uh, Flux reconcile source is it is it uh oh right get and then oh, oh. and then the name I guess wow clearly I am uh uh I no. think it uh, flux system yeah. <clears throat> yep I think so there you go nope. okay thanks <laughs> okay so now it uh if I do flux get source get it's going to um now it's going to show me the revision that I'm actually on um. And now let's take a look at um, what did we do? We added um, we added traffic namespace. So I'm just going to do a k get ns. Um, it added the traffic there namespace. Well, let me do a Helm ls all. Oh, I didn't add my Helm stuff. Let me do a flux um, get hr. Oh. Did I not do this right? I'm so sorry. Let me see. This will be where observability helps. There you go. So flux uh, traffic. I've got a Helm. Uh, Helm. Did you set the namespace? Yeah. The, I, what namespace did, the did all that namespace. go into? Yeah, okay. I did. I did, uh, I did dash a, so it should be all namespaces. Um, let's see. So. Uh, oh, 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 flux get HR is just looking in the flux namespace. It's not finding the Helm release object in there because I think you put the Helm release object in the traffic namespace. Namespace. You need a dash, dash N, I think, on the flux, flux get right. HR. I think. There it is. Oh, yeah, you were correct. Thank you. So reconciliation in progress. Um, that's great. So I can, I can if I want. Um, this is kind of cool. So now I can do, if you want to see like, oh, great. So there's now a traffic um, Helm release. I can do a, a K describe just like you would, all right, Kubernetes administrators or, or, or operator or human operators perk your ears up. So it's just, uh, it's just this. Okay, come on. Uh, do I have auto? You need the namespace again. <clears throat> Thank you, wow. Um, thanks. Right. So, so you're starting to get, um, 
the the basic observability here as messages on the on the flux uh, uh, custom resource. Um, if I probably do this again, I'm going to. It's just not ready. So I'm just going to take a moment. Oops. <sighs> <laughs> just gonna take a moment. Um, in any case, in any case, we can see it. We can see it happening. We can see it happening. Um, uh, yeah, the controller is currently applying the. Um, yeah, I can do. I could do a. Uh, uh, so it actually. So it actually the, the controller maintains the helm. Um, like it's not doing a Helm template, right? And, and piping that to apply. It's actually using the Helm. Uh, uh, correct. Yeah, it's not using Helm okay. template. It's using Helm. So I'm actually gonna I'm gonna get out of this because I think uh, you know what it looks like, and we can look at it in a bit. I want to show you real quick um, how you can. You don't actually need to use these commands to do this. Do we still have a moment? We we don't have that much time. But yeah, it's well. We you you guys have we we don't have a a hard stop so. Yeah, okay, let's well, not... respect people's time. So basically, yep. I, as opposed to, so, so we use the bootstrap commands to create, uh, or sorry, not the bootstrap commands. We use the, the, the flux create commands to, to create these, um, these resources, right? Now, um, you know, I, and I just like you done it, added a normal, you know, just echo for this. And that's the same, that's the same for any other Kubernetes resource, exactly the same as these. The flux create commands are just, we're just helpers. So I can just copy that into a new directory called cert manager, and I can do a, a literal find and replace. And uh, let's go crazy. Oh, look at you. <laughs> OK, so what we, so the namespace is now cert manager. Say we're going to install cert manager in the cert manager namespace. Unsurprisingly, um, the Helm repo is not going to be um, correct here. So let's just go ahead to JetStack. Or actually, let's go to Artifact Hub, because that's where people should be looking for packages, the CNCF Artifact Hub. Mm -hmm. So um, go to Cert Manager, check out the installation. OK, so I'm actually just going to keep it Cert manager for now. If I wanted to, I could call it Jesta. Actually, why don't I do it? Ah, I'll keep it Cert manager for now for fun. If we had more JetStack stuff, we could we could name this JetStack. We could really do it however we want. Um, and then inside of the Helm release, um, I am going to change the version to one point three point zero. And there we go. So ultimately, I've got everything set up. I don't really have to do anything special. Um, I really just want to see this. Okay. Oh, they're they're um they're asking if you can increase the font size and the VS code as well. Oh damn it! Uh, <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> there we go. That's right. <laughs> okay, so hopefully you got what I was showing you is that these are just the the, the files that I showed you in BI before, um, and all I was doing is copying pasting, and I changed the uh, sorry about the font size, folks, and then I changed the the URL to be the actual URL of where the JetStack. Um, uh, Helm repo is for cert manager. Yeah, so I guess what you know, essentially, what you're doing is you you copy the traffic one and mm -hmm. you you changed it, and then you're just going to apply those same um, manifests. Yeah, it's so just this kind of time easy. you're installing cert manager. Exactly, it's just kind of an easy way to do it. You can also um, just go to the these these uh, the spec um, inside of the documentation too, and go to the Helm controller Helm. Uh, both the source controller Helm repository CRD and the Helm controller Helm release CRD. And that's pretty much all I just did. Um, you know, it, you don't actually have to use these these commands at all. They're just they're helper commands. So um, so anyway, so we have that, and um, and I just got the right I got the right version. Um, note that I'm specifying a pin version. You can create version ranges, semver ranges, as well. Um, so that is interesting. So, if, so uh, in the meantime, um, the Helm chart had installed. Oh, it didn't install. Something failed. You know, I am actually very curious to see what failed. Reconciliation failed. Why? Oh, sorry, I'm going to bump down the 
<laughs> the font. Uh, it's waiting for something. Tell out waiting for resources. Waiting for the condition. Mm. I do not know why it's waiting for a condition, what condition it would be waiting for. But I think with what we, the time we have right now, I'm not going to look at that. I had just done yeah. this <laughs> and it's fine. It's fine. Trust me, it's fine. Um, so, uh, so now what I'm going to do, just to show you this part of it, is I'm going to do a git add um, flux boot cert manager. Oops. For example, you could name only it if you want to, right? So, and then I'm going to do a git commit um, cert manager go, and then I'm going to <laughs> git push. Oops. I'm going to actually push it. And then um, you got to start making I, aliases for all your typos, so that way you're working. Yeah, there you go. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's what I do. <laughs> I just make aliases for that. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay. So then, um, so then you know, uh, again, just to show you, uh, you know, it's it's like too instant. I should really have multiple windows open with watches, like Cornelia was doing before. But if I do a, you know, a, um, you know, a git log, a git log, and one. And get that get that SHA, and then just do a, a flux uh, git source git, and you you see where we're at. It's not correct because it's on an interval, and so because you know, in order to instead of just talking for a few, a few minutes while I while this reconciles, I'm going to trigger that. So it's as if the time period had evolved, had elapsed. I'm going to do a uh, flux reconcile source. For the name of my source, and now it should um, it should match, and it does. There. Now let's do a a cube a cube cuddle, saying that just oops. Uh, get namespaces. Um, looks like cert manager is there. Just for fun, I'm going to do a Helm and cert manager installed uh, quite fast. I'm not really sure what I did with traffic. I probably screwed something up uh, in some little typo somewhere. But um, anyway, you can see how that uh, worked out pretty quickly and it just does what it needed to do. So what you would do at this point, I was gonna show, okay, so I was gonna show, uh, all right, now you got your file structure um, and now you're gonna go ahead and do the same thing for the example app. And I was just gonna add pod info as the example and add an ingress, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, an ingress statement to the to the chart for pod info, um, and then just like port forward traffic because I'm a kind locally, um, and you can see it running. But I don't think I need to show you all that. I'm not really trying to demo what ingress looks like. Um, I hope this gave you a sense of how um, how you can really interact with, or basically how you how how you, how the flex components work in general, how you can set up your repo. Um, it can be set up all differently. I had mentioned before, there's no gold standard of how file structures can be set up. You can have the infrastructure, for example, in one Git repository, and you can have your applications in another. You can separate them by team. Um, you can separate them by namespace, of course, to match your, your organization rules and RBAC in your cluster. Um, I'm just doing a fairly simple one right now that just puts it all together. So Elise asking a question. So I just need one flux deployment for several namespaces and a single repo with directories for each namespace. Um, the nod, yes. You don't, you don't <laughs> have to do it like that, but yeah, that 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 is correct. Yeah, you you and by when you say one flux deployment, do you mean um, like a one flux operator managing yes. multiple different namespaces? Yeah, it's so yeah, one flux yeah. controller or one source control. Ultimately, one set of flux components is the optimal way. You can Got scale it, it of course, um, mm -hmm. but uh, and and it really just follows. Um, uh, excuse me, um, uh, <laughs> sorry, it really, it really is ba built on top of um, uh, what's, what Kubernetes is using already for controller runtime. It's like SIG controller runtime. Um, yeah, and so let me add to that. So I don't know whether the person who asked the question, it was familiar with Flux1. But Flux One they are. was, if you will, <laughs> <Yeah>. okay. <laughs> yeah. Flux One was was single tenant, if you will. Um, it depends on how you you know define tenant. But what you did with Flux One is, anytime you had a different repository, you needed to have a new Flux controller. So ev there was a one to one mapping between those. And so this is a common question that we get, which is, 
hey, the more workloads and the more different repositories I have, the more flux controllers. Now the flux controller is really lightweight. Um, so it actually wasn't a big resource hog or anything like that. But what's happening now with Flux 2 is that it's not that there's one controller anymore. Remember, there's these, we've broken down what we used to be in one controller into a set of controllers, but you don't need a separate source controller for each one of these. You have one source controller, you're going to have separate source um, objects per repository. So CRs, you'll have separate source CRs, source Git, you know, Git repository CRs or Helm repository CRs. That's what you saw Scott doing just now with separate CRs for the different Helm repositories or the Hel different Helm releases. But there's only a single, each of the controller types, there's only a single one in their multi-tenant. Yeah. Awesome. Nice. Yeah, and we get thumbs up. Multiple, it, yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, no, I said uh, well, what Shari yeah. said. You know, he, he got it now. So cool. Okay, good. Yeah, and to be clear, you may have one source, one defined source per repository or per, for, per source type, even if it's not a Git repository, it's one of the other types, um, but you can have multiple um, customized objects that then are responsible for applying uh, manifests within a specific path that's specified. You can have multiple of those per, per, per uh, repo, depending on what you want those rules to be. Um, you right. may want them to be out on different um, time intervals. You may want them to have different, yeah, et cetera. So um, there was a question. I'm trying to find the exact question, and I can't find it, but um, I, I, I remember the, the spirit of it is how Helm updates work um, with with Flux, meaning like if, if there's like a um, oh, there's an there upgrade, a, like if the chart like gets updated, does it yeah, the chart gets updated. Like how do or, I, yeah, yeah, how does the update work? Uh, yeah. So sorry, just to be clear, do you mean in you mean the Helm do you mean the Helm upgrade command, or do you mean updates to a chart in a repo? Updates to a chart. Yeah, well, yeah, update I, both essentially, but yeah, yeah, the 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 initial question about the update to the chart, but then the actual Helm up, update command as well. Got it. Yeah. So so if you um, uh, maybe I should share my screen again. Actually, maybe I don't have to. But <laughs> if you remember, if you want me to, I will. But if you remember the because I pinned a specific version of that chart. Even if new chart versions are pushed to that Helm repository, it won't um, it won't do anything. Chart uh, charts are intended. Helm charts are uh, supposed to be um, idempotent, and so if you make a change to your chart and don't bump the version, tough luck. You know you really should, because otherwise you're really screwing your own. Your your or excuse me, you are really um, uh, not following best practices. Uh, at that point, or, or whoever would be doing this, right, would 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 have been make, would be making mistake at that point um, and not following best practices. So definitely bump your chart versions when you want those your uh, changes to be made to each chart, even if it's a README change. Um, that's a recommendation. Yeah. But, now, if in if in the manifest you had put a, a Semver range, and somebody bumped it from, and the Semver range allowed you to have anything you wanted in the patch patch part of the semver, the third part of the semver, then what? That's correct. You, then, then, then it would do that. So if, right. So then if you, if you, if um, the source controller was on an interval to check every half hour or 10 minutes or whatever, or one minute, whatever you want. Um, and it sees a, a new, a new version that matches the semver range rules that you've set out, then it would say, okay, cool. I'm going to go, I'm going to uh, go grab that. Um, we uh, we have uh, different different techniques for for pinning those, and I, I would really uh, suggest people that are really interested in in um, exact disaster recovery to to pin versions and to look at the image automation update functionality for um, that's being worked out for excuse me that's being um, moved from worked on from alpha hopefully getting to, to beta in the not too distant future very soon. Um, for other aspects of Flux, which allow you to set different policies and then, and then the image update automator will write back to your Git and actually pin versions based on, based on annotations that you want to set. Um, you can also do that, that kind of thing like this without um, using the image update automation controller um, using CI. 
you know, you can, you can, for example, uh, I mean, I would say you could write your own flex controller to do this if, if you wanted to, but that's kind of what the image update automator is supposed to do. Um, but one could, for example, do that and pull, you know, um, say, say you're, 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 you weren't doing a Helm repository, but you were looking at something else or it was a Helm repository, et cetera. And you could, you could have that pinned back to Git if, if, Git if you wanted to. Um, so Simver ranges are really good. Basically, if your policy doesn't need you to be at ex an exact specific point, if you want to be at, an, at a specific point and don't have automation to, to help you set up that pinning, then you want to just keep it pinned. We showed the image update automation last week or two weeks ago on the last episode. That's exactly what we showed. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's really more of a con. I'm just so mentioning this in the same breath because the concept is similar. You, you, yep. you, mm -hmm. yeah, you, if it's very imperative uh, that you have a specific, a specific version, which it often is, then you want to, you want to do whatever, use whatever tools are available to make sure that you are pinned. That's it, you know. Nice. Awesome. Cool. Um, yeah, I there's no, yeah. Sorry. There's no, um, I don't think there's any more questions. I don't know if you guys have uh, anything else that you guys wanted to touch on um, before we wrap up here. People expect a blog post about how you set up your terminal is what it looks like. Yeah, okay. yeah. Well, everyone's, everyone's, <laughs> loving your, everyone's loving your terminal. There's like, yeah, they need like, to seriously, upgrade Scott. their terminal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, I, I would actually speak to it. It's, it's a project whose name I can't remember at the moment because I am jet lagged really bad. Um, yeah, so yeah, no, it's uh, yeah, no, no one, no one knows, but uh, Scott took a uh, a red eye just to, yeah. just to be on the show. So <laughs> thank you for doing He's that. He's flying. Yeah, somebody's <laughs> flying. That's yeah. right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know. I wore a mask. I was very careful. Um, but yes, it was uh, it was a risk, but it was one well worth uh, the cost. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I'm on an hour and a half of sleep, but hopefully that that didn't hamper me too badly. I didn't use Flux on install, but apart from that. Pretty but good. apart from that, that's right. <laughs> um, nice. Uh, so just real quick, um, like we mentioned last time, we are putting on a uh, KubeCon Day Zero yes. event. The GitOps Working Group is putting on a GitOps Con. Uh, we are, CFPs are still uh, still open, right? I'll put it in the chat. I'll paste it in here for all those. Thank um, you. I was trying to grab it. Yeah, yeah I, tried. I, I made a bit leap for it, so it's easy to remember. Oh, um, <laughs> Uh, I put in the chat there, uh, please, uh, if you have any ideas, if you want to share some use cases that you guys had or done, um, uh, we're, we're interested in users and end user stories, right? Um, anything you want to share uh, with the broader group, um, uh, you know, CFP still open till next week, next Friday closes and we'll be, uh, you know, um, contacting those that are, uh, uh, that are selected. So um, yeah, yep. day zero event doesn't cost anything, right? If you're going to KubeCon, you might as well check that mark, check that yep. uh, uh, box, right? Mm -hmm. To uh, get registered for uh, GitOpsCon. And and on behalf of the uh, the, the um, GitOpsCon programming committee, uh, Christian and I, um, don't be part of the hockey stick. Get your uh, get your submissions right. in sooner yeah. rather than later. Help yes, us out. Right. I can review them, the better I feel like. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. We, we want to... You know, um, you know, I'm I'm guilty of submitting CFPs at the very last All moment, but now, but now I'm on the other end, and I'm like, come on, like, can... <laughs> so now maybe I'll yep. start submitting my CFPs earlier now that I'm on the other side, yep. uh, waiting for them. Yep. So. Yeah, if you could. And it's probably worth noting that there are other events. We don't probably have a lot of time to get into. I think we we mentioned them the last round, but but mm -hmm. um, there there's a uh, there's GitOps Days. There's there's the GitOps Summit at CDCon. Um, there's a, there are, this is the year of a lot of, a lot of, uh, hopefully not the only year, but a year where a yes. lot of this is happening. So get your CFPs everywhere, not just to That's this. Right, yeah. Um, right. and yeah. point, really welcome cross pollination and collaboration between these different communities. So hopefully oh, definitely yeah, yep. in any way competing communities, I mean, maybe we can make each of each event can try to be the best it can, but, but hopefully we can, we can, uh, we can intersect more. So folks from CDCon can be involved in, in GitOpsCon and, and, and vice versa and so on. So we're hoping to really get a lot of good um, synergy here. That's awesome. Yep. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, the, uh, it's, it's a community and we even cross, like you said, cross pollinate uh, communities as well. So um, yeah, come share wherever you can. And this is 
the year of get ops, I guess, right, we can say since all these are popping up. So um, yeah. the, the, the year of the uh, Linux laptop wasn't here, but maybe the year of the get ops is so um, definitely year of the get ops. Finally. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> all right. Awesome. All right. Nice, nice. Anything else you want to share or Chris, you, you ready to uh, I mean, I don't, I don't see I any other Chris questions. Uh, well, yep. stop. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, there's no other questions. Uh, looks like Waleed might be sharing something with us. So that'll be great. Um, yeah, there's nothing left on the air today, folks. So thank you for joining. Thank you, Cornelia. Thank you, Scott. Yes, thank, thank you, Christian. You um, thank you to the audience. And uh, we look forward to seeing you all soon. Thanks for having us. It's super fun. Yep. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye.